The president has a view very similar to the view he had when he ran four years ago, that a bigger government, spending more, taxing more, regulating more, if you will, trickle-down government would work. That's not the right answer for America. The economy works best when middle-class families are getting tax breaks so that they've got some money in their pockets. And those of us who have done extraordinarily well because of uh, this magnificent uh, country that we live in, that uh, we can afford to do a little bit more to make sure we're not blowing up the deficit. An aggressive Mitt Romney takes the fight to Barack Obama, the challenger apparently breathing new life into his struggling campaign in the first of the head-to-head -head TV debates. With the focus on domestic issues, Romney not surprisingly zeroing in on weak economic growth. Obama maintaining the Republicans' tax plans don't add up. A snap CNN poll gives the edge to Romney, 67%, saying he won the debate with just 25% for Obama. So, consensus is that Romney's turned the heat up on his opponent. This is what a couple of the U.S. news outlets uh, are saying about it this morning. This is the Washington Post, the front page. Wash uh, Romney takes the fight to Obama. Down here, rejuvenated Romney hammers Obama on his economic record. This is the Huff Post. Mittens comes out swinging. Romney dominates presidential debate over listless Obama. So pretty clear which way they're going. Uh, the other main news on Reuters this morning, Turkish artillery hitting targets inside Syria after a mortar bomb fired from inside Syria killed five Turkish civilians. NATO is calling for an immediate end to Syria's aggressive acts. It's the most serious cross-border escalation in the 18-month uprising against Syria's President Assad. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton expressing outrage over the incident and pledging talks with Turkey on the way forward. It's a very, very dangerous situation. And all responsible nations need to band together to uh, persuade the Assad regime uh, to uh, have a ceasefire, quit uh, assaulting their own people, uh, and begin the process of a political transition. Here in Europe, no change expected today from the Bank of England or the ECB, though uh, we may get more detail from Mario Draghi on the ECB's bond-buying program. Let's get to Carsten Bresci, senior economist, ING. Morning to you, Carsten. Um, what more meat can Draghi provide for the market today, do you think? I think not, not really a lot. I think uh, his hands are tied because he's really waiting for the Spanish government to apply for, uh, for money from the rescue fund. And he's, I think he's going to kick the ball back to the field of politicians to hurry up, to speed up all their efforts to find more integrated Eurozone. Do you, do you get a sense of backtracking from Finland, Germany, Holland regarding this crisis, but especially, especially Spain? No, we, we've we've had of course a lot of backtracking on the on, on the bank rescue, the, uh, the the hardcore group of three. Um, at the same time, we, we get all kind of new ideas from from Mr. Van Rompuy, where they now talk about a central budget for the EU. So we've seen that there are always very good promises for the future, but once really a push comes to shove, we see lots of backtracking. So this is a very dangerous situation. Clearly, and with a with a focus on Spain, clearly investors' patience is wearing thin. It's going to continue wearing thin. Have you got any concerns about today's auction? No, not really, because we've seen that all, all these auctions in the past they they went well. But I think, look, we have next week we have a Eurogroup meeting at the end of the week. We have an EU summit. So I, I think that really um, there are lots of moments now for the Spanish government really to apply for some European bailouts. What, what is your greatest concern um, as, we, as we start Q4, we're, what, uh, almost a week in now, your greatest concern, the greatest threat to the global economy right now? It's the lack of growth. It's, it's clearly we, we see that the China is slowing down, the, the U.S. economy is not really picking up speed, and the Eurozone is in a, in a deep recession. So this is the biggest worry for, for the next weeks and months. It's the lack of growth and it's high unemployment. Thanks, Carsten. Other news, uh, riot police clashing with demonstrators and arresting money changers in Tehran in disturbances over the collapse of the Iranian currency. The rial has lost 40% of its value against the dollar in a week. The fall linked to Western sanctions against Iran. On the corporate front, shares in Hewlett-Packard plunging to their lowest in nine years. Chief Executive Meg Whitman warning of an unexpectedly steep slide in earnings next year. Software, the only bright spot, she said. And an Italian bar owner who climbed onto St. Peter's Basilica in Rome has come down after a 24-hour rooftop protest in the Vatican. He was complaining about plans to auction off beach bar licenses. The man was helped down by police, later vowing to continue his fight. Uh, that's it for this morning. More Champions League football. Our pick of the day, Cristiano Ronaldo, celebrating one of his three goals in Real Madrid's 4-1 thumping of Ajax. 
in Amsterdam last night. Three other big spending clubs, though, Zenit, St. Petersburg, Paris Saint-Germain, and Manchester City all failed to win. I'm Axel Threlfall. This is Reuters.